One week until the NFL draft, perhaps one of the most highly anticipated Panthers drafts in team history. Let's not totally forget about 2011. That was a big one, too. Yeah. But the Panthers have the number one pick again, and they traded up for it. And the way things are going, Julian, there's been a shift. There's been a wind change. It's crazy to say out loud, but did the Carolina Panthers trade a haul of picks and a very good wide receiver to draft a 5'10 quarterback who's under 200 pounds in Bryce Young? <sighs> Well, Nick, he weighed in at 204 at the combine, but we know that his playing weight is likely somewhere around 190, 195. Bryce Young is a complete outlier. We've never seen a player of his height and weight have long-term success in the NFL. But we have also seen a 6'6", 250-pound quarterback right here in Carolina, right before our eyes, physically break down. So the game of football does not discriminate whether you're 6'6", 250, or 5'10", 204. Yeah, it is a little bit concerning when you think about the, the height and the weight of Bryce Young. If you watch him play, though, the guy is one of the most elite quarterback prospects in this draft class, which is why every, a lot of people right now think he's going to go number one overall. The way he maneuvers in the pocket, he might not have the biggest arm, but he gets the job done. He's accurate enough. He was able to make plays at the biggest level at Alabama in the SEC. And even in losing efforts this past year against Tennessee and LSU, he was the only reason. I get it, Bama, ton of talent. But the talent around him this year was not nearly the same talent that he had the year prior with Jamison Williams and with John Mechie. And if you compare C.J. Stroud, what he had at Ohio State, it wasn't the same comparison, apples to apples. Big programs of Bryce Young at the highest level in college football got it done consistently. And that's why the Carolina Panthers look at him as the top pick right now, according to many people out there. Well, many people out there, is this some sort of elaborate smokescreen? Do you get that any chance that Scott Fitter, Frank Reich, David Tepper are just playing everybody right now, trying to bait the Houston Texans to come up one spot? Yeah, it's been three straight Mondays where Peter King has come out in the Swiftwell Morning America on NBC.com talking about how the Panthers look like they're liking Bryce Young. And we've seen Chris Morton from ESPN.com say that, Adam Schefter, and now all the mock draft people are saying, I don't know who Carolina's going to take, but the league thinks they're going to take Bryce Young. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Now, is that smoke a smoke screen? Like you're asking? I'm not quite sure. I don't think it is. I would not still be surprised if they take C.J. Stroud. I obviously, honestly, wouldn't be surprised if they took Anthony Richardson. They've said that they want to keep their options open. They want to do their due diligence, that they have not decided. Scott Fitter said a couple days ago they have not decided who they're going to take. I just believe right now it's got to be Bryce Young, and depending on who you talk to, some people say they trade up for Stroud. There's others who believe that they trade up for Bryce Young, and Fitter would talk about clarity. They've gotten that through the process. Maybe it just became more clear to them that Bryce Young is the best player for them at number one in the draft. Let's talk about that process because it sounds like at some point in the next couple of days, Frank Reich and Scott Fitter are going to sit down and, like, on the count of three, say who they want to pick. What do you yeah. think of the way they've, they've got about this? It's funny. You would think that throughout the process, if you're traveling to Columbus, Ohio to go see Jay Stroud, then Tuscaloosa, Alabama to go see Bryce Young, and then to Lexington to see Will Levis, and then Gainesville to see Anthony Richardson. At some point in time at these dinners, you're going to look at each other and be like, hey, who do you like? You, you like him? I, this guy's pretty good. Who you're surprised by that, but I, I kind of believe them. At least I want to believe that they have gone their separate ways while still being on the same road trips and haven't sat down and had that much of a discussion. But there really hasn't needed to be a discussion until now where you have to decide who do you want. They don't go into the clock until, what, 7 o'clock yeah. next Thursday night in Kansas City. So they have time to talk about it and to think about it. And it's smart to go to the Combine, to go to Pro Days, to do top 30 visits, then to have all the information gathered and sit together and talk about, okay, which guy do we like the most? You have to wonder, though, like, have they not had a little, little wink of a nod, winking a nod saying, hey, this is, this is who we like. Yeah, so, okay, so if it is Bryce Young, how can somebody like me get more comfortable with taking a guy that is an outlier the wrong way in size? Like, what attributes are the Panthers weighing so much more than just what he looks like and, and how he plays? So I guess I shouldn't tell you that me sitting next to you right now, standing next to you, I'm 6'1". Mm -hmm. I'm 5'10". 201. So, yeah. so I'm an inch, two inches taller than Bryce Young and about the same weight. And my playing weight would probably be right there if I was in shape. Um, and I guess that probably wouldn't make you comfortable. I would like to be Bryce Young's weight, but I am his height. Yeah. 
The S2, cognitive yeah. test, people have been talking about that, how he has scored higher than guys like Justin Fields. So I guess there's still questions about whether he can be a franchise quarterback. But Joe Burrow, he's been excellent. He's turned around a franchise up there in Cincinnati. Patrick Mahomes, he's been able to score higher than him. He's the best quarterback in the National Football League right now. Looking at how his ability to process, seeing the fact that he can maneuver the pocket and he can avoid those big shots. People talk about his durability. He only missed one game in his career at Alabama, and that was because he fell wrong on his shoulder at Arkansas. Misses a game against A&M the next week against Tennessee, who ended up being one of the number one teams in the country at some point in time last year in college football, threw for 500 yards, led them down the field to win the game until Bama kickers shanked the kick and they miss it, end up losing that game and the end of regulation. Bryce Young is a Heisman Trophy winner. He's a guy who has always been short. He knows how to play short. He plays bigger than what you look at him in height and stature. So I'm not all that concerned about durability just based off of I've seen plenty of players bigger who have failed, and I've seen players who are smaller who have been just fine. And Russell Wilson, that's been the kind of the comp. He's a little bit stockier than Bryce Young. He's allowed to say like 215 on the Broncos website. He's someone who also came in small but came into the league, has not really dealt with that many injury issues that kept him out of games. And every player is going to have, you know, the, give me a little bit of knocks and be able to have to play through it. I'm not all that concerned about Bryce Young and his injury history because there really isn't an injury history with Bryce Young. Regardless of who they pick at number one overall, what are the fair expectations for the incoming rookie quarterback and this team in 2023? Fair expectations? I wouldn't say playoffs. You look at the roster defensively. I do think they're going to be pretty good. I'm very excited to see what that new 3-4 scheme is going to look like with new defensive coordinator Jero Vero and how he can maneuver that defense, especially Jeremy Chin playing close to the line of scrimmage. I think Brian Burns is going to be excellent. Derek Brown. I'm excited to see what that defense looks like. But offensively, offensive line, they should be good. I have my concerns about Austin Corbett with that right, uh, that right knee or the at right guard with the knee injury, the torn ACL he suffered in Week 18. Brady Christensen coming off of that broken leg as well. I think he'll probably be fine, but Corbett was a really good player, and it takes some time to come back from an injury like that, especially one suffered so late into the season. But overall, I think the offensive line will be fine. As far as the skill positions, like Adam Thielen, I think he has another year left in him. But I'm not sitting here thinking Adam Thielen is a guy a couple seasons ago that had back-to-back 1,000-yard receiving seasons. He's not that dude. If he was, Minnesota wouldn't have moved off of him. DJ Chark, there's a reason he's now on his third team. Fine player, but is he an A1 type of wide receiver? They don't have a wide receiver that's better than DJ Moore on this roster, and this was already a wide receiver core that wasn't great. So they can improve, certainly. Adding Hayden Hurst, that's a good thing. So there's more around this rookie than what Sam Darnold and P.J. Walker and Baker Mayfield had a year ago, but it's not one of the best receiving cores in the NFL. As far as expectations for the rookie quarterback, I don't know whether Bryce Young or C.J. Stride, Anthony Richard, Will Levis, whoever it ends up being, I don't know if they're going to be ready week one. Scott Bitter has said that they're not going to rush the process, and they even said a year ago, now lesser expectations from Matt Corral, let's take some time, let's really get him ready. I think they want to play the rookie when he's ready, and there's a reason why Andy Dalton's getting paid $8 million guaranteed, and there's $17 million potentially in incentives because they're going to allow him potentially to come in and be that week one starter, and when the rookie is ready, then they play him. But when the rookie plays, it's the NFL. You saw Kenny Pickett was the only rookie quarterback to have success last year. It took him a little bit of time. The Steelers got going late in the season. I wouldn't expect this rookie to come out here and be a game changer day one for the Carolina Panthers. But if you can see the bright spots and the flashes that they could be the guy, that's all that really matters next season more than the win-loss record. You're really building to 2024 where the division still should be pretty wide open. All right. Uh, they have other picks. Let's talk about the next one. Oh, they do. Pick 39 in the second round. Something they really wanted to hang on to, according to Scott Fitter, in that trade. What do you think their approach should be there? What is the value that's going to be there for them? Well, the, the approach is going to be best player available, yeah. and that's why they went to free agency trying to set themselves up for that. They've gone out, got safety in Von Bell. They've got some defensive tackles, Shai Tuttle mainly, uh, Deshaun Williams as well. They've gone out and been able to get some wide receivers, although fine receivers. You had to fill the holes. I'm not sitting here jumping up for joy, but it's a better situation than what they would have had had they not done something in free agency to address that position. Brian Hayden Hurst, Brian Miles Sanders. So they kind of filled a lot of the holes that have been on the roster. There's still a big hole at edge rusher opposite of Brian Burns. Frankie Louvu, Marquise Haynes were really good players last year, combining for 12 sacks. I don't know if you can expect that kind of production from them again this upcoming season. It would be nice to have a younger player, maybe a B.J. Ojolari out of LSU, who can be that guy opposite of Brian Burns, who can fill the, the hole that's been left by Hassan Reddick, who had an excellent season in Philadelphia. A corner... There's an argument to be made that the Carolina Panthers are a playoff team last year. If Dante Jackson 
or J.C. Horn, especially J.C. Horn are healthy there in week 17 where they got burned at Tampa Bay by Mike Evans. So that's hurt them and Keith Taylor, C.J. Henderson, yes, development, maybe a new coaching staff can help them. Just have not seen enough. I would think that a third corner would make a lot of sense for the Carolina Panthers. And then I mentioned wide receiver. Who's guaranteed to be on this roster in three years? No one. I know there's contracts that say, oh, okay, three-year contract, more so that's really like a one- or two-year deal. Who do you know is going to be here with that rookie quarterback for the next four or five, hopefully ten years? I don't see anyone on the roster who I just know for sure yeah. is going to be that go-to guy for him. I know it's a kind of a smaller receiver class. I wouldn't hate going for a wide receiver there at 39. Or the way they went about free agency, they're set up to go best player available, which is the right approach. Man, it's been a fun 40 or so days since this trade happened. But Exhausting. Oh, there you <laughs> Keep it locked in with Julian at Locked On Panthers.